Oh, that's right. Good evening. Welcome to the April 1st. April Fool's Day, everybody. No, I'm sorry. Go home. <laughs> yeah, all right, we're done. Um, our issue 14, Wyndham Raymond School District Board of Directors meeting. The time is 6.30. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, if I could have a roll call, please. Sure can. Kate Bricks. Here. Eric Colby. Here. Jennifer Fleck. Diana Forslin. Here. Marge Gavoni. Here. Pete Hensler. Here. Jen Moore. Don Dillon. Here. Jerry Keen Dreyer. Here. And Diana Marcel. Okay. Um, if you could join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, um, first on the agenda is public input. If there is anyone from the public who would like to speak on anything that is not on the agenda this evening, you may. Seeing none, I will close public input. Um, first on the agenda is the presentation of our 2015-16 calendar. Um, Christine, if you'd come up, please. school calendar for the 15-16 school year already. Um, as you know, I can review for the public. Um, the calendar is not built solely in RSU 14 um, because of the new law in, instituted in three years ago called the Regional Calendar Law. We must align our calendar to five other districts um, that we send uh, students to Westbrook Vocational School. Um, we need to come up with a aligned calendar in order to meet the needs of those students and we are not allowed to have five dissimilar days in our calendars. Um, so we work together to create a calendar to start and start school and have vacations at the same amount of time so that we don't disrupt instruction. So um, I'm happy to say that all of the districts um, we were able to agree. We have our pieces in place. We did make a few changes this year that I'd like to outline for you. Um, first of all, our in-service days in October and March have been moved up in the calendar. Um, the one in October has been moved up a couple weeks because having it at the end of October, we were running into uh, an awful lot of states, conferences, meetings that are being held, and the vocational center also has activities at that time, and it was really hard having kids out and, no, and not having school. So October was moved to the 9th in March. We also moved the date up in order to stay away from the new spring testing, the MEA assessment, um, out of that window so that we had greater flexibility in testing our students in RSU 14. The four other districts felt the same way. Um, there are only so many weeks you can test students, and by having another day off for students, um, and knock on wood, not getting any more snow days, we felt we wanted to be a little bit more proactive. The March day, um, we're very excited about March 11th next year. All of this, the districts that we combine with have that day, and we're looking at doing some um, sharing among schools and doing some PD um, in some specialty areas and sharing staff to do those pieces in different campuses. The other um, change or the other addition um, on our calendar is Friday, August 28th. That is our new staff orientation day where we welcome our new staff in and, and do training. Also on our calendar, it's listed as an ed tech training day, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, the ed tech training day is an option for any ed tech um, in our district to come into their building on that day and complete the human resources training that we need to do. Um, each year, we are required by law to do annual trainings on sexual harassment, FERPA, Chapter 33, which is restraining seclusion. All of those must be done annually by staff. So we're, what we do, we've done is put this in the calendar so that any staff member who can come in early, go to their building, do their trainings, and have them done. Um, the other option for ed techs, if they don't want to come in on that day, is they are welcome to do their trainings any time outside of their school hours as long as they have all of them completed by September 18th. Then they can submit their time card and be paid for those six hours of doing those mandatory trainings. So... 
Um, this will be messaged out to staff tomorrow in an email so that ed techs have an understanding um, that it's not a mandatory day to attend on that Friday, but it is an option for them to come in. And each of the building principals has welcomed anybody to come in those days and use the facilities to get that training done. Um, the other notice on the calendar, which um, was a little bit different for us last year, is Christmas vacation. Um, we will be holding school the Monday and Tuesday before Christmas, um, aligned with the other districts. This year, the way where Christmas fell, we ended up having two weeks off. Um, and so that is a, another change. We're kind of back to our regular schedule um, for Christmas vacation. If all goes well and we don't have any snow days next year, uh, we will be out of school on June 13th. Um, and it's interesting, this morning I worked with middle school students and we talked about snow days and they asked, they said, well, don't we get five? And I said, well, you really don't get five. And I had to explain to them for every day that we're out of school for snow or another reason, we have to add that day to the end of June. Um, and, and Mr. Prince can attest to, they had some neat ideas for making up snow days. It was a, a great discussion this morning. Um, but assuring students and the public to understand that our students need to be in session 175 days. Um, and so if you miss one in December, you've got to make up one somewhere. And traditionally, they're put on at the end of June. So I'll entertain any questions the board has on the calendar. Uh, yeah, Christine, how many dissimilar days do we have from the other districts? We have five. And the reason we have those five is our students go 175 days. Other districts actually go 177 student days. And a couple, two of the other districts have more um, teacher in-service days than we do. So they have other days in the calendars that they're off, that we're on. So that's where the dissimilar. It just has to be one, one group that doesn't send kids that day that counts as a dissimilar number. So. And this is not unique. This is not unique to us. Um, from being in the paths meeting, I can tell you, um, they have to put a calendar together that has thir thirteen, Chris, nineteen um, districts sending mm -hmm. nineteen total, right? Because some have small number of students coming, and <clears throat> they are looking for exceptions and waivers because they cannot. They can't even come close to, to meeting that. So this is not unique um, to us in any in any way, shape, or form. Um, actually, I think this looks it looks pretty good, Christine. Um, and I know, you know, we don't set up when Christmas comes and all that. But right. um, from being in the schools as frequently as I am, I've heard uh, a lot of comments from teachers that uh, when we when vacations fall and it's and it's two weeks in a row for students who have um, issues, learning issues or behavioral issues, a lot of times it's hard to get them back on track. So I'm glad to see it's, you know, it's not a straight two weeks. Um, does anybody else have anything for Christine? The green box in service days. So we yes. just have three for the year, correct? We have three for the year. Um, and the other two purple boxes are days that are um, teacher comp days in their contract for doing conferences at night. So, okay. Yeah. And Labor Day is later this year. It's actually not till the 7th. Um, so, yeah, it's our first day back with f full staff for opening day is August 31st. So, Labor Day is late this year. So, thank you. You're welcome. We all set? Yeah, I don't have any uh, question for Christine, but I would like to uh, just in the future talk about, uh, as she did mention, the alternatives to snow days. And uh, I think I had sent out an email a while back about uh, blizzard bags that other communities are doing, other districts are doing. So at some point in the future, um, I'd like to be able to discuss that alternate ways. We have that in our parking lot. <laughs> Just so we don't How about no more snow? <laughs> <laughs> when I say parking lot, our leadership, we have this whole, uh, Cindy is very, very kindly keeps our running list a tally for us and nothing drops off. She, we just move it over to the parking lot so we can bring it back out again. <laughs> Much rather be proactive about it than <laughs> reactive. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you for reminding us though. Um, okay, um, saying that, I will, uh, I guess, ask if there is anybody from the public who would like to make a comment or has a question. I get to come up to the 
If you would like, you most certainly can. Just speak into the microphone, All please. Right. I'll sit so that I don't attack anybody. I'm Barb Murray. I'm president of the Raymond Wyndham Ed um, Support Education Association. And um, we had our meet and consult with uh, Superintendent Prince and Mrs. Hessler. And I'm delighted to see that there is an option for the EdTech training. Um, many of us um, have other lives in the summertime. So for those of us who are able to come in on the 28th, that's fabulous. For those of us who aren't, I, I appreciate that there is a, a date certain of Fridays, um, September 18th for that training to be completed. Uh, it's all online training. It is web-based, so it's, it's an very doable um, for folks to do it when it's convenient for them. So I appreciate that that option has been presented. And my only question is, um, would the final calendar have um, a note that would indicate the two options? Christine? I'm not sure if the notation can oh, be put actually on the calendar, yeah. but it is in a form going to all staff tomorrow morning. Um, we also have planned that any new hires will have it in writing. Um, it's also going to be in Mr. Prince's welcome back letter um, in the fall, in the late August when he sends it, inviting everyone back. Um, and actually, like we actually talked funny. about sending out a Blackboard Connect message um, starting in August, mid-August, to let people know to remind them that that's an option for them to come in if they'd like to, and reiterating the plan that we have in place. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Because the calendar actually uh, <clears throat> goes out to the public a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and it would just raise a question, what in the world is this? Okay. <laughs> and then the only other question that I have, Christine, is um, what would the earliest date certain be that folks could um, access the online training? Um, we have already contacted ProTrax, and they're redoing some of the videos, especially the one that's an hour and a half long on <laughs> Chapter 33, <laughs> Restraint and Seclusion. It's yeah. going to be down to a half hour, I'm happy to report. Um, they're aiming for August 1st. Um, but until I get a date certain and it's in our inbox, then I will be able to message out to staff saying that the videos are available. You can start early if you'd like. But until I get the videos in hand and uploaded on our place, I hate to set a date and then not be able to follow through with it. Yeah. Understood. Thank you. You're Great. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Barbara. Okay. Christine, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Saying that. Uh, I will... Take a motion. <laughs> oh yeah, we have to move. I want to approve the 2015-16 school calendar. Second. It has been moved and seconded. Any questions? Seeing none. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you for Christine. Thank you for all the hard work. We appreciate it, and it's a great calendar. Okay. Next on the agenda. Uh, will be our budget deliberations amongst the board. Um, we have we have our big books. Some of us have it electronically. Some of us are better than others. Um, and we've had the presentations. Um, we received from the cost centers. We've received um, a version four today. Um, I know it, it probably came out a little bit. Um, late for folks who work to really get a chance to, to look at it. Um, Stacy Webster from Central Office is here um, to help um, go through this with folks. Um, please remember this is kind of different for, for Stacy. She's, you know, but this is her baby. Be gentle, be yes, kind. be kind. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, Kate. I was trying to. <laughs> I was walking on eggs here. Um, so um, if anyone has any any um, questions well, uh, we can probably can I just start with um, two options that sure. the board I think you have uh, this sheet in front of you is it 3.33 on the top yeah yeah okay. we just thought it'd be good to kind of sort of zone in on that because we've been working on the budget all week and um, as you know, right now in the budget, 
today we have included the charter money. We've been very conservative with that. And so one option is Andy, I don't know if he can hear you because I can't. Yeah, sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Can you hear him? Yeah. He yes. He's shaking okay. his head yes. Okay. So. so one option that you can consider is to keep the charter money in the budget with the assumption that either way we hope the bill goes through because it would really help financially. If you kept it in the budget, we're just at 3.33%. And I think last week we are well over 4%. Um, if you wanted to pull the charter money out, which might not be a bad idea, might not be a bad idea in that I think it's likely the bill could go through. Um, but if we want to be more conservative, then, you know, obviously we don't want to do that. But part of me, I'm sort of on the fence with this whole thing. If you did pull the charter money out, you'd be at 2.71 percent. Um, so well, that's two options. Both options are better than what we had last week. Can, can I can I ask on um, on the charter because I, I really I really can't remember what the bill exactly said. I know I know the general content of it. Um, is there any? Was it definite that if it passes, it would be effective this year? Would be one question. Yeah, uh, if it passes, that's the intent for July. Yeah. Yes. Or could that? The problem is the bill could change too. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Know. Could they change it and saying, "Yeah, it's okay, but we need more time, and we'll <clears> pass it, make and change the effectivity date." Right. Okay. I have to say, out of most of the bills, this one seems to have a lot of momentum to get it passed. Okay. Yeah, I just have a question about that. Um, I would think that there isn't like extra money that they're just going to send out to cover these expenses, that it would come out of how much they're reimbursing us on the back end. So instead of just covering this expense, they're spreading it I over all the school districts yeah, is what I would imagine. So I don't know that it would be a straight. It, it can't, the, G, the general fund that is allocated for the school systems right from the start they pulled that money out and then they recalculated what every district would end up with so we have those numbers so the amount of money that we're receiving in the old way was you might think that you're going to have 10 students go to the charter schools but then halfway through the year you realized you had 20 and so unfortunately you weren't able to budget for that up front they're just taking x amount of dollars out of the general fund for public education and put that towards charter schools. That's step one. And then step two, the remaining money goes to the districts. Right. So if everyone was sending the same number of charter students, I guess it would be somewhat even, right? But if we're sending more than some st towns, other places in the state, then we would benefit from this? I guess you could look at it that way, yeah. Um, but either way, it's not going to be a straight everything we were spending on charter schools is going to come out of our budget because on the back end we'll be reimbursed less for the other expenses, right? Yeah, okay. that makes sense, yep. So we're probably somewhere in between these two, even if it does pass. I don't know that I would say we're going all the way to 2.7. Well, okay, so that's an increase in the $42 million, right? Right. It's not an increase in the, the other local other funding. Okay, because so at this stage we're talking about the, the full budget, not the net. And the, and the question is, you know, do you want to pull it out? I, you don't have to answer that now, but I mean, that's one of the things if you want to pull that money out and mm -hmm. get the budget lower, you could do that. I'm always thinking down the road when it comes to the public vote, just that um, the, the more we can get this budget down, the more we're able to sell it. Um, okay. I'm going to ask, uh, if we went with 2.71 and we said, okay, we're not going to count the charter, we're going to make believe the bill goes through, blah, 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 and there's the money, and it doesn't happen, where does that extra money come from? Great question. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Stacy and I were Stacey, talking Stacy, can that. I... You you really have to talk in the microphone because oh, it's, 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 not, it's, not very sen it's not very sensitive. 
we, we had this conversation today of where we would find the money. And, you know, probably, I, I hate to say how, how much, but I mean, attrition could account for a portion of it. I don't know if it could cover it. I don't believe it would cover it all. So then I guess that would be up to you folks to find the rest. So again, if, you know, if you have to replace a certain teacher and you find that you had a little savings with that person because you hired somebody new um, and you hire 10 new staff members, you might have some extra money to, in the budget that could go towards that. I'm not sure we could get 200000 Worst situation, we'd have to perhaps freeze the budget at some point in time next year or um, not replace any openings. Um, that's difficult to do, particularly with classroom teachers. But I think those are the types of things that we would have to look at. We just have to really tighten up on the budget. So then vice versa, though, if we put it in there and we... Uh, have extra money. And we do get it. Yeah, and we do get it. Then what do we do? Well, then at the end of the year, they could put it. Put it in capital reserve. Right. I always get nervous when it mm. comes to our government. <laughs> Rightfully so. And I, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure I could endorse taking the whole shebang out, maybe half of it. Um, it's kind of a compromise if we wanted, and I, I like the 2.71, but I'm just nervous about, so if we only took half, maybe, or whatever, whatever, right? Um, we wouldn't be caught as short. Yeah. What is half a shebang? Well, how about, <laughs> how about 2.99? <laughs> it may not be half, but it's got to be, just keep it, it, it would be less than three, you know, and it would still give us a little bit of a little bit of leeway there um, if you know maybe we decide after we go through the rest of the changes yeah, because we've got other areas of uncertainty too we have um, kindergarten enrollment that is uncertain where you know maybe the level of uh, staff required um, that was already taken down I think and then the revised well, if we're if we are coming across a couple of these things then we we keep them in in some places and we take them out in other places and we're kind of hedging ourselves that way. So you want to just put this aside? I, I think you're saying, I don't think we need to make a let's put this aside for now and let's go through and see what the other changes were. Right. Okay. Go ahead, Kate. Um, just right on the top you, you've made some substantial reductions as I went through and did the comparison. And I did it by cost center. Um, and I don't know if it, if it would answer some of the questions that we're all wondering about what's in, what's not in. If you could go by cost center, for example, Wyndham Primary is now down an additional 32000 And what is that? Okay. Um, is that possible or is that how? Well, the biggest change has been the health insurance. We had initially budgeted 12% and it came in at 5%. Mm -hmm. So that was a savings of $260,000 across the district. Well, some of, okay, maybe would you say that's the majority then? I mean, I'm looking at yes. that's the majority of what the changes are. It is. Is the it is. You should have a page that lists the changes for this version 4 in the I, packet um, that you got today. There were some position changes as well. <clears throat> Can I, Joe? Yeah. So can I ask you then the first item, Raymond Choice? Yes, we reduced Raymond Choice. There were not there are not as many students this year oh. as in years past. Oh, okay. Could you go through the list, perhaps, just of what the changes are that would be helpful? Yeah. So Raymond Choice, she just mentioned health insurance that was down to five percent. Yes, five percent. And, you know, I might ask each administrator just to highlight their reduction as well, because they can tell you the impact. Randy, do you want to talk about that intervention that's 14,000? Talking RES or? Jordan Small. Jordan Small. Small. Um, the, we had an interventionist ed tech position at Jordan Small that's being eliminated 
balanced off by the addition of the interventionist teaching position. And so we've reduced um, about 18 hours out of that position, leaving seven hours, and that's going to be picked up by another ed tech um, who will take on a few of the duties that that person had in terms mm -hmm. of data collection, um, progress monitoring, those pieces of interventions. So it's a small savings, right? Mm -hmm. 14000 that's being picked up with the one yeah, below it, right? Yes. Right. So. Oh, no, no. The JS Media Ed Tech. That's, That's the person who's picking up the other seven hours. So you got the difference between 14 okay. one and 13 That's five. Okay. Okay. Right. And then JS temporary salaries. Do you have the same list that there that we have yeah. here? Oh, okay. Yeah. That was a reduction in substitute um, salaries. Then RES kindergarten, kindergarten numbers are down. Right now we're at 18 students, so we're going to leave two kindergarten positions in there at this point in time. Yep. And we think that would be sufficient. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Howell, do you want to speak to your English one fifth position? Thank you, Randy. Good, e oh. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is actually something that I shared at the budget meeting um, on Saturday. We are in the midst right now of building um, classes for next year, running sections, making sure that we have things covered. Um, and initially in our budget, we had asked for two-fifths additional English. Uh, by moving some numbers around and looking at class sizes, I think we'll be able to do that with one-fifth instead of the two-fifth. Uh, and so I shared with the board on Saturday that to go forward with the one fifth instead of the two. So, roughly, I believe each fifth is around nine thousand um, dollars. So that is a net reduction of about nine thousand um, to the high school budget at this time. Um, and as we continue to build the budget, if there are positions that we can free up or move around, we will continue to do that, like we always have in the past. Okay. Thank you. And Bill, do you want to talk about your reductions? Okay. Good evening. Um, really, my um, reductions were in two areas: um, the healthcare portion that Stacy already mentioned, and then there were fifty-one thousand dollars in project elimination um, for this year delay. Um, the two projects that were eliminated were sixteen thousand dollars lease, lease purchase for replacement lockers at the high school. Um, as I explained to you before, a lot of our lockers are original and tough shape, and that's been cut from the from the budget. And then the, the other project that was eliminated was the high school floor refinishing and masonry repairs. Um, if you go into the high school, you'll see that there's some, we have some cracking going on where expansion joints did not continue all the way down the side of the wall. It's not it's it's not structural at this point in time. It needs to be addressed, and we were going to address that when we also refinish the floor. The floor finish has been in place since it was put in 2004. So. It's been 10 years, 10 years of recoding. We're going to have to do that. We're just going to delay it a year to refinish it next year. So that's $51,000 in reductions. Hey Bill, are you just delaying that because of budget reasons, or are there other reasons why you're delaying it? Speak up. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it, it is, a, it is a, 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 um, a, a reduction due to, to, to meet a budget target, yes. Now, you, you made the comment that it, it's, it's not basically an issue at the moment at the moment always makes me a little nervous especially especially the masonry the um, the, the the intent of doing that work was um, there's some block replacement that needs to be be removed and then uh, the expansion joint needs to be installed so it can properly move because buildings are leaving li uh, living growing entities they're not a static structure um, so we didn't want to do that after we finished the floor um, that would kind of be a really bad idea so we we're planning on doing the work first and then finishing the floor over the course of the summer. So okay. that's why we bundled it together as one project. What, um, do, I don't, do you have the numbers for these separate? <clears throat> Can you give us what the masonry work would be separate from the gym floor? Because as I think you just stated the masonry should be done before the floor anyway. Yeah, we were going to do them at the same time because the other reason it makes sense to do it as one project is that in the event that you're removing a block to 
um, fix the masonry and, and just say it gets drops of floors damaged, we'd fix it and fix the floor at the same time. So I really would prefer to do them in the, at the same time frame okay, so that in the event we can make, fix those should something happen. Now the contractor should take precautions to protect the floor, um, but I certainly would rather have that work done first and then know I'm through that and then I can do the repair work. So it really makes sense to do it at the same time. I, I don't see a huge impact with waiting a year to do that. Um, so just it's going to add to the to the list of projects we need to do in the future. So let's pay me now or pay me later. Correct. Did, I just, just say I couldn't help. Yeah. Okay. And again, I, I mean, I know we talked about in the, in the budget meeting that with two hundred million dollars of physical plant, you know, you start looking at what you need to do to support it. You know, this the, my budget has increased significantly this year, as we're trying to move up that level of support for the projects. And you know, next year we're probably in a similar situation. I'm going to be looking for continued funding to need to move our, our maintenance plan forward and it's a challenge in, in these times so you know I think dropping these two projects has the has the least impact on the students that are that are in the buildings um, at this point in time um, we're probably going to spend some maintenance money um, continue to repair the lockers in the high school that's probably the one I have the most heartache with because those are used every day and I think principal Howe would be happy to tell you that there's often um, challenges with those lockers just because they either don't open or jam or, or have issues so but you know, there's a there's a line somewhere you got to draw. So that's what we we, we really. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Bill. And Charlie, you want to talk about the uh, reduction of the middle school teacher in your budget? Good evening. Good evening. Um, since the proposal of my budget initially, a seventh grade teacher who was out on leave has decided not to come back. So um, that position uh, is really open as a credit for the center, uh, given the fact that I had requested two other positions, uh, one for sixth grade and one for seventh grade, and now this gives me an extra seventh grade position, which at this point I, I don't need. I would love to have it for an interventionist, but. Uh, in the interest of, of meeting budgetary needs, then we can uh, forfeit that position at this point. Wait, can you just clarify? You said you'd love to have it as an uh, This doesn't change your request for. No, it doesn't. I mean, if if if. Uh, it's an opportunity for the middle school to to look at um, uh, some bun uh, funding credit. Uh, and contribute to the, the needs, uh, but I'm I'm also looking at the opportunity given the, given the first version that I could use that position in a different role in terms of a literacy specialist for the school. But um, I know it's there and it's and it's a credit that I can give. Is that reflected? I know I know you all hate me with this cover sheet, but it really helps guide my thinking. Is that reflected in your seventh grade staffing? It has nine seventh grade teachers. No, it's not. So that 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 would um, in that extra four. yeah in in that cover sheet that reflects my needs. So in reality, I have one extra seventh grade position, which is not reflected in that cover sheet. So it shows nine sixth grade, nine seventh grade, and eight uh, eighth grade teachers, and that's my need for classroom teachers. So in, since that cover sheet was was uh, finalized, then that seventh grade teacher um, decided not to come back, and it freed up that other position for me. So is it still nine or is it eight? No, it's still nine. I was going to use that in a different way. Oh, okay. So it would have so been. So it's still nine. Teacher. Okay. So it would have been ten. Right. It really, was ten. It was really ten. It, I get it. Ten positions. It wouldn't have been ten there. I would have used it for an intervention, as I spoke before. But uh, I get it. Okay. because I did add positions to it, and if I had known that um, uh, she was not going to come back, then I would have figured my bu budget differently and compensated for the fact that I knew she wasn't coming back. So. So it's eight. No, it's still nine. It's still nine. It's still nine. <laughs> Who's on first? <laughs> <laughs> still nine. Ten positions. Just one is not. One was a floater, kind of. One right. Not. Yeah. One's. One's a floater. Right. Would have been not more. <laughs> there is no floating. So that would have been three positions you would have had if you'd. 
one of which was already in the budget. So, Got it. and when I put the two others in, and this then this became a floater because she decided not to come back. explain this but I can't wrap my head around it um, and I'm looking at and first let me I know there's a lot of discrepancies with this chart and I think there's work that the board can do at another time to make it easier for you guys and for us mm -hmm. um, but with what we have now and this is for you Ms. Webb <laughs> um, or maybe it's not the 2014-2015 figures here for staff, what is the date that that reflects? That was the open the door of a year ago when we started budget deliberations. So the 2014-15, the open, open the door. Open the door. It's not, the, it's not reflective of the adopted budget, which we're going to do differently next year. That will make it better. Yeah. <laughs> helps. <laughs> In the door and I just have to say um, just as an aside not for you but I completely get and it needs to be said again that we're using a completely new computer program and so if if we look like we're a little muddled here and all of us myself included it's because we're trying to navigate something that's new this year and um, Hopefully next year it'll be smoother going, but Stacy's been the one who's been knee deep in making all this happen. So I can't thank you enough again. And any questions that I have is not because I think you screwed up; it's because I don't get it. <laughs> so, um, so I don't get this when I'm looking at your seventh grade with three teachers with the 1 to 16 ratio. And I know, I, I apologize, just indulge me if you would just explain it again. Okay, sure. So what we're trying to do is, um, I mean, for this cover sheet, we've got to put teachers in grade levels and we've got to divide them out in some fashion. Yep. But in reality, at Jordan Small, there are sometimes classes that have cross grade level situations. So, um, I mean, algebra is a prime example. There's 27 kids in algebra right now. Um, some are in eighth, some are in seventh. How that sifts out across, you know, are they seventh graders or, you know, it, it makes it a little less clear, but that's where the needs are. So we have a geometry class that's small. It's only got eight students in it, but in order to offer geometry, that ties up one teacher, one block a day um, and that kind of drives some other decisions down the line so you've got to have algebra you've got to have several sections of pre-algebra and seventh grade math um, so it doesn't come out into nice neat um, numbers like an elementary school it's pretty easy to to see where the kids are you've got x amount of teachers at a grade level you've got um, x amount of teachers and we divide them up and that's where their classrooms are and they spend most of their time there but the middle level it's it's a little more fluid based on based on need so I guess what I'm wrestling with and um, then how and maybe that's a question for how does it work at um, Wyndham Middle School I, I'm, I'm just having a hard time when I look at seventh grade 1 to 16 but then it's 1 to 23 at um, your building. I don't. Right. You're welcome to join me if you want. <laughs> um, I'm going to take a stab at the fact that it's. Is this we have the same range of needs at Jordan Small with 200 kids that you would have in a building with 600 kids. There are kids that, I'm using math as an example, kids that struggle in math. So we have a seventh grade math class that only has 15 kids in it. Those students are just now really starting to get into seventh grade standards. They've been working on sixth grade standards for a lot of the year. Um, you know, there are other kids that are right on grade level. There are other kids that are ahead of grade level. And so to, to kind of 
kind of meet the needs of a diverse group of students with only a few teachers becomes quite a challenge. Um, and fifth and sixth grade is a good example. We've got four teachers, um, 95 kids roughly, and there aren't a lot of options, <laughs> you know, as to how you uh, help students that are struggling in literacy because they're in the, uh, a grade level classroom that's moving at a grade level pace and if we just don't have any other options for them. So that's, it's, it's really needs driven in terms of student, where the students the are at. Low population. Because you don't have. Uh, and, yeah, in my mind, the, the needs are just as broad as they are at Wyndham Middle, but because you, some of these classes are going to be smaller because you just don't have the critical mass. But I don't know how they do things down the street. <laughs> well, um, the, the data ratios, the, the ratios for class for, for a student or teacher are reflective not of ability, but just by numbers. And what what Randy and I are, re myself are reinforcing the fact that when you look at academic need and where they are, then the numbers become skewed. Uh, and so uh, even uh, at Wyndham Middle School, there will be differences in classes. It won't be all 23. The average is 23 to 1. But it could be that I've got, a, I've got an algebra class that has got uh, 28 in it. Uh, and another pre-algebra class that's got a different number in it. So it, it skews, the, skews the whole ratio uh, aspect when you look at academic need and where they are with their, with their learning. Uh, and with Randy's limited resources, then he has a limited uh, space availability to, to put those kids. And, he, and he, uh, the ratios are going to be different for him. Um, so it, it, based upon their academic need, that's where the, uh, the differences lie in terms of, of uh, why some, there are small numbers and why there are very large numbers. So and the, other, the other piece of the puzzle is gifted and talented, so that we have one GT teacher for grades three through eight for both buildings. And scheduling-wise, you can't offer the same sort of program that, that the Wyndham students get. You, you don't, I believe you have a sixth grade advanced ELA class, you have a seventh grade advanced. Yes. And that's their, that's their teacher of record. That's their everyday teacher. We, we can't do that. So we offer an eighth grade advanced class for gifted students and we try to meet the needs of those students in the regular classroom. Um, and, you know, with some pull out times with the GT teacher and special projects, but it's not the same sort of program and it's just a function of, you know, he's only one guy and he's stretched pretty thin. So that's part of these numbers too. Okay, I'm, I'm good. You did a nice job. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so you're giving him a three or a three point? I give him a ten. <laughs> wow. Only go to four. Yeah. Wow, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you get bonus <laughs> points. Keep up with your grading <laughs> system here. <laughs> yeah. It's good to hear this. Does anybody else have a? Thank question you. on the budget for Stacy. Hey, you're next to my vision. Um, let's just send a bus with five students from Wyndham up to the Yeah, we do. You can't pull out now. Kind of going back in history, where the effort was to. Uh, have some flexibility if parents wanted to go up to RES, knowing that we had more space up in RES, smaller school, might be a better fit for certain students, and certainly can't do door-to-door -door transportation, so the compromise, <coughs> and I think the cost was 11000 Kate, I'm not no, exactly right. sure, that we would <coughs> um, provide transportation, um, and I think the pickup place is at Hannaford, sort of one of those parking lots up there, and take the students Actually, they're picked up in Manchester, aren't they? I'm sorry, yeah, picked up in Manchester, and then they're taken up to RES. And that's the transportation that we provide, and it fluctuates anywhere from four to five students, probably on the average. Um, and that, that's what if, we've been doing. If I remember correctly, though, I think we also, at one of our discussions, had said that, that that's it, when we're going to let them go through. You know, and we wouldn't be adding any more to it. 
but we couldn't stop them in the middle of their, right, uh, right. I mean, I would never do that. their education. But it was, you know, we're not going to add on to it if all of a sudden, because it's been a couple, of, two, three years now. So, I mean, the hope was that uh, it, would it would be grow. a nice option. Yeah, um, didn't work for parents and students if they wanted to have their children go to schools in England, which you know is great. But if it's only five and we're we're spending eleven thousand dollars to do it, um, and and we haven't seen a trend of maybe increases year after year after year, it gives me pause. Did we promote it this year? Well, no, we said we weren't. Going I think. To. It's not like we send a letter out or anything like that. I think it's more word of mouth, uh, to be honest with you. I had a phone call, an email yesterday, actually today, that a parent wants to go up there, and I said certainly that's fine, and just feel free to coordinate with the building principal, and we'll move on. Um, I guess just for clarification to help my memory on that, so is the expectation any new registered student that we – not provide transportation, even though we have a bus taking the other students that were approved in the past up there? Or no, I don't, I don't think that, that, that was the conversation. I, I, I think part of the conversation was, and if we're only going to have five, I don't know why we're not downsizing to a van. I mean, I don't think there was one available, but I think it's something we should keep, I think there was something we should kind of have Mike keep an eye on that now because even if we had more I don't think look I don't know what's accommodations in a van at the moment I can't remember I, I, I can't remember uh, I don't know if we got eight passenger vans or whatever they are um, but I thought we had the conversation and maybe we need to have it again that um, this evidently was not going to take off um, because it's been it's been a while now uh, we're still at the same number of students, and uh, and I don't even know if we came up with an answer, you know, a conclusion that, you know, we're not going to offer it anymore. It was like we were going to let these these students, you know, continue and go through, um, and not add to that anymore, because of the expense. It's very expensive for us to send that bus up there. Yeah, well, and just, just so you know, I have approved all along students to continue that. So. Oh yeah. If, if there's a point when you want to stop that, if that's the decision. No, no, I don't think that was it. I think it was oh. whether we, to Pete's comment, comment right. you know, are we advertising that? I think it, we need to have the discussion, do we still want to keep having that bus go on up there like forever? Because those numbers are going to dwindle because those kids are going to age out and we're going to have a bus going up with two students, you know. Yeah, all I would say. I don't that, think we should stop them. No, but uh, I mean, I would just pose the question that it's hard to judge the success if we haven't been offering it. I, but but I, publicizing. I, I mean, it's it's available, but I don't know how many people. I think know they have. I I don't know. I'd have to ask. I don't know about this year, but I think in years past. We the have. We did it initially, but I just, I just don't know about this year. Well, we're going to have. Well, anyway. Right. We that's something else we have to make note on. To, we'll have another in discussion the, on it. Want. In the pocket. Okay. Just to ask, is there much of a cost savings with a van versus a bus? What would the cost be for a van if the if a van was available? And then, you know, there may not be a big difference in that cost. In that, if, do we want to fill the bus and publicize it more? I mean, it's a good question. I'll get that information for you. Yeah. Okay. Is that You'll get numbers, right, where we're at now? Okay. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Because maybe there needs to be a, a threshold. Yeah. No. I think at one point we talked about 10. We had hoped to have at least a minimum of 10 students on there. Because, um, I mean, it's not it, – it's such a wonderful thing to be able to do, but it's kind of a luxury. It's like personal transportation that five <laughs> students who want to go to Raymond. I mean, if you have five students and you're spending eleven thousand dollars, everybody can do the math what that is per student. And I don't think we're alluding to the fact we don't want to stop the kids that are already going. No, 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 no. So that no, is no, no. not. I don't want anybody to get nervous in case anybody's watching us. Um, you know, we're not, that, that's not in question. 
But anyway, okay, moving on. But they could ride the back of Kate's truck. Up on in. Do you have anything, Eric? I don't at this time. Thank you. Jerry, do you have anything for yep. Stacy? I Diana? don't think so. No. Oh, for Stacy, well. <laughs> <laughs> Diana. Mm -hmm. well, I think you pretty much got what you needed. Yeah. Good. All the questions I asked you that's good. what I was looking for. So that's perfect. Okay. I'm. I have to make this comment. I'm sorry, but I do. Um, I'm very concerned that we are considering um, taking out of the budget um, the high school masonry and gym floor for $35,000, but we have left $20,000 in the budget for the primary school to have smart boards. Um, that concerns me. Um, not that I'm not a fan of smart boards. I like education, um, but I, I really think the need for um, cracks in the masonry and fixing those gym floors really should uh, rise a little bit above having um, additional smart boards, uh, especially seeing as most of the classes down there already have them. Um, and that's my take on that one because I did notice that that was not um, on there as a reduction. And I'm just looking at it from a standpoint of, you know, what, and I, and I know Bill stresses a lot over um, not having adequate money to do what needs to be done to keep our buildings uh, safe and in condition that they need to be because bottom line, they have to last us a long time. Um, so that's my thought on it. I don't know what anybody else thinks on that. I was actually a little more disturbed with the lockers. We have lockers that don't work and kids need them on a daily basis. That's, that's highly disturbing. I don't know, you know, I've seen the floors, so I don't know what shape the floor is in, but I was a little more concerned about lockers that don't work. Yeah. Especially, especially since we don't let them they're not allowed to carry their backpacks yeah. to class with them, so now they have to use their lockers. You know what I mean? I don't know if the floor can be put off for another year, but what are kids supposed to do with a locker that doesn't work? I agree. Yep. And that was what stood out to me, too, both those items with the high school maintenance and the smart boards, too. It seems like you know, they already have a very high percentage that, that have them. Um, I would um, agree about the, the high school, the gym floor, the masonry, and the lockers. I think that's a, a real concern. I'd like us to, to figure out how we can can keep that. No one likes to get cut, but um, I think we have difficult decisions about what is necessary and what's nice, um, and those are the tar hard ones. But um, I do see that people made some real attempts mm -hmm. here to make some some mm -hmm. cuts that are, are very helpful and have saved five hundred thirty-five you know, thousand dollars, but. I'm I'm concerned about that as well. I I would, I'm not going to I don't support it. I don't think we need to let Bill do his what he recommends and needs to happen. So I I wouldn't support cutting the masonry and the lockers. Oh okay. Yeah, that, yeah. that's what I won't support. I I don't know if we need to cut somewhere else. Um, I was not the meeting on Saturday. I'm sorry, so I'm not as clear about some of those pieces. But if the smart board seemed like that's a nice versus a necessary, I think that's where we're sort of talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, if we did do the smart boards, <coughs> sorry, Kyle, um, and went back, and I would con uh, first of all, the lockers yeah, have to have to have right. workable lockers, um, and I think the smart board was twenty thousand. Yeah. So we'd still come, you know. So now we're down to twenty one. So we have to find, but I, I. I would endorse keeping the masonry and the lockers. Um, did I add wrong? Yeah, you did. Oh my gosh. See, when you don't use a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you're close. Oh, I was close. All right, thanks. You get the gist. 
So all that matters is the budget's just being close. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually brought my calculator, but I did it by hand. I don't think Don would agree with us. Mm -hmm. Well, Stacy. <laughs> well, but I, I went back with the consensus is spent, et cetera. Right? Yeah. So it's. So what I'm hearing is lockers you would want in masonry and the gym floor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Bill wants to say something. Just say one thing here real quick. Um, you know, I'm really fortunate to work with a great administrative team, and I just want to make it really clear as we work on this together and kind of make these choices as a group. So, you know, we understand what we're getting into. So just so you're clear, as we kind of looked at that, and that's how we came to our decisions to delay those two projects that I had in the list is that we could get by another year with that. And, and you know, the smart boards certainly have an impact on the kids in the primary school. So, um, you know, I'm happy to have Kyle or, or, or Chris get up and speak, but as a group, we kind of came to that as being the best places for us to cut next, just so that you're, you're clear with that. And it's great that we have a great team that works together to do that. That's very kind of you. Well, we have a great team. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> yeah, and I, I would agree. I, I appreciate that you all really do the hard and heavy lifting of this you know so obviously we're at the the tip of the iceberg you do the, the hard work and so you've already decided and sort of among yourselves and I do appreciate the way you all work together on doing this this is not I'm going to have this and you're not it I know it's very collaborative and very supportive so I appreciate that but I think we also have a level we need to look at in terms of nothing to do with you all kind of agreeing how we need to look at the, the whole district budget mm -hmm. so, okay <laughs> oh, I do have one question. Um, there, there was a conversation at one point in time that our original four point, thank you, six three. <laughs> thank you. Uh, um, could have been six point something. There was on, something on the evaluation. I'm sorry. On something on the evaluation that came down from from the state, I don't know if it's just affecting oh, the winning. tax base. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I don't know if 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 that is was taken into consideration. I don't. I I just want to make sure that later on we don't find out that. Uh, oh, by the way, <laughs> you know, because I know by you, the way, you did well, a lot of sure work that it would be higher that bottom line percent. Okay. There was a question at one point in time that maybe the 4.63 was right. Are you saying because, because, because our revenue was. will be different? Well, the cost sharing formula that has been voted in is going to have an impact on the Wyndham side anyway. Right. right. And, um, but that won't affect but this not number. That, but okay. this, no, that won't. But this was on something to do with the evaluation. Well, I don't know what you mean by evaluation. I'm this is a comment I got from Don as we were walking out of a building, and then he, and he, I never got the answer. Well, this is, you know, this is sort of um, rough numbers, but if you went with the uh, under 3%, 2.7%, mm -hmm. I think is what we're looking at. If you went with that, the tax implication on a $250,000 house um, on the Raymond side would be $22, and, and this is rough. I mean, mm -hmm. don't hold, hold me to it. And the Wyndham side would be $119. So it all depends, you know, where we end up at the end of the day mm -hmm. as far as the increase. Okay. I just don't, I just didn't know if there was, like, something else sitting out there I did, that, like, could possibly happen. It's kind of like this charter school thing. I always get, like, a little nervous that, you know, all of a sudden, there could be something else that's going on. Is there, I'll rephrase that. Is there anything else going on that could come down and have a negative impact on our budget? Maybe that's a better way to. Well, not that I'm aware of. I okay. Mean, unless. That's all I need. Yeah, I mean, no, I. Are the numbers from the state of what we're going to get for, what is that called? The REP, are those good numbers? Are they the ones that we're. They're preliminary still. They're still pre preliminary. So that, that could go down, possibly. They actually changed it in between version three and version four. Um, they came out with another one, so. Okay. 
could change was it more a couple in more our times. favor or against? It was about ten thousand dollars difference. Okay. Up or down? <laughs> um, up. Do you have so? Do you? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you happen to have the um, those estimated tax numbers with the charter? Uh, yes, with the charter, Wyndham side 140, Raymond 50 dollars. Okay, great. Thank you. And that, you know, that's mm -hmm. preliminary thinking right now. I should think we should pretend that it's not, it doesn't exist. Well, just in general, I have to say, under three percent is much more palatable to me mm -hmm. um, than anything three or above. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but could we could we bring it closer to? Uh, I don't I don't know. I I'm not comfortable personally. I'm not comfortable going totally without all of the charter money. I, I think I like that little bit of. I think it had been brought up that little bit of a cushion just in case so that we don't have to take it out of a reserve fund or, or, or somewhere else. Um, so if we could, yeah. So if we could do a, still keep us under three. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about putting in another 51, yeah, adding 51,000, yeah, right. which is not a huge amount, but it's still, if we put another 51,000. Well, 51,000 for mm -hmm. the high school masonry and lockers. Well, I'd still so like to see those smart boards come out. The 31. Okay. 31,000 there. There's other adjustments. Do you that want, are be I mean, typically the A team makes the reductions. Do you want to just kind of give us a figure and we'll make the reduction? Or do you want to get that specific on the type of equipment that you. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm so I don't know how the A team yeah, will yeah. feel about the smart boards. I don't know if you want to get into the, the weeds with that or just give us an amount of money and we'll do what you I'll need to do. I'll be happy with the figure. Well, I think we're, I, I'm hearing consensus we all would like. I want the masonry and lockers back in. I'm getting that as a consensus. So we, mm -hmm. that's our add-in. Right. I'm happy to let where the reduction. Do we want the reduction of the whole 51000 Do we want 51000 reduced to make up for that, or do we want part of that? Question number one. The other is, Marge, you're saying put some money back in for charter school, not all of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do have a contingency, as at two hundred thousand dollars again this year. So I mean, we may have to look at board contingency. If the charter school thing doesn't work out, we have some cushion, and the rest might have to come from contingency, which isn't great, but we could. So let me see if I can get this right. Add in the fifty-one thousand. We have to decide we want fifty-one out or not. And then what would it take to get us to like two point nine nine with some charter school money? Is that clear? Yep. <laughs> to me. There's still other percentages that aren't firm though too. What, what are those? We haven't finished salaries, other salaries that we haven't talked about. But there's, but, but there's placeholders for that. Yeah, placeholders and, right. it's, and it's usually per a contract, okay. per the contract the numbers if I remember right. correctly. Okay. They come Sorry. right out of the contracts. Well, right. no, but we're discussing, we have other salaries that. Oh, the other ones. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, some are, we know by contract, but some we right. don't know. Okay. No, Anything so else that's floating besides to. those salaries? No, we and, the ED set, and the ED 279, whatever we get from the state. Right. Came down. And that we got more, actually, when it, the last one they I got. I don't know. Did it go? Did she said it went up 10,000. 10,000. 10, 10, so. Approximately 10,000. Yeah. When do we know those for sure? It will no. be, it will May. be, yeah, May or June. After we're all left. done? Sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah. Usually, it does yep. seem to be. We tend to budget on that pretty conservatively, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we're not surprised. It's usually a yeah. pleasant surprise. Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't affect the increase number, right? What comes through in the ED two seventy nine, because that's what you subtract from this, right? If we're still trying to balance out to a two point nine percent increase, right? So we're going to put the masonry and lockers in and take some charter money out. Yeah, either way you're going to witch at it. Right, okay, right, yeah. right. So, <laughs> so do we want the, do we want a equivalent cuts of the 51,000 or some portion of that? Or just see what would happen. What if you put that back in, put some charter money in, what that would and get to 2.99 and see what that is? If it works, it works. If not, we may have to 
go back and ask for some cuts. Does that? What was the charter money? I, I, I can't. 254. 254. If I was a math whiz, I'd have this all done in my head right now, I figure it out. I my computer, but. I could whip this yeah. right up, too. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. So, so did you ready. put an increase amount of students, or did you keep the same numbers as this year? How did you come up with that figure? For Raymond Choice? For the charter. Um, that's, I, I did increase it a little bit. I think I used 3%, um, but we had more kids um, start with the second half of the year, so um, we, it's gone up considerably. How many students do we have now? And uh, just a minute, I can tell you. Something I'm thinking 29 with something. I don't um, know if that's charter. Or charter right now we have we have 29 Raymond Choice, China, 19 okay. charter. Is there any uncertainty surrounding the retirement? Is there a bill? I know that that changed recently. Yeah, I don't know if that's got a lot of momentum but the whole idea is we're paying a portion now for teacher retirement and that was sort of like an unfunded mandate and there's been a bill in there to go back to the old way where the state would pay for the total amount of uh, teachers retirement I'm not hearing a lot of love for that bill to pass but uh, yeah, I think it's I think if one of the bills will pass is the charter one but i'm not sure about the uh retirement one so that one would potentially help us but we've got it budgeted in as if we're paying it, so. correct make it any worse no. well and there's actually an increase in that this year as well it's it's going up july 1st for but us yes for us and that's been that's reflected yes, in it is. okay yeah um, Stacy, can you tell me under Christine's, um, she was the only one who had an increase in version four of $23,000. She had a teacher, a middle school standards teacher that was added to her budget. Thank you. Why isn't it in, the, why isn't it in yours? It's just like a shell game? No, standards. Well, Charlie's going to answer. Back up to the podium, boy. It came out of yours and went into this one? It did. It's a shell game that I really didn't think there was a need for. But uh, in my original budget, I asked for a full-time interventionist. And uh, on the cover sheet, I placed the infamous that, cover sheet. The infamous cover sheet. Uh -huh. I placed that interventionist in the standards-based position because the standards-based uh, charge for uh, the, the charge for those teachers is really the same uh, as my interventionist so putting it in the cover sheet and putting it in, in that position uh, it was felt that it should be under Christine's budget at that point and not mine and that's that's what happened the old shell is that game, is huh? that is that true of everybody's and all the buildings that the Pardon? interventionists are in Christine's budget? Not the interventionists, but the standards-based teacher. So um, the standards-based teacher position has, again, a lot of similar charges as my interventionist who will teach a class, who will work with small groups, who will do intervent small interventions with teachers and, and, and students. So by label, it looks like a standards-based teacher, but technically it's an interventionist in my building. I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily in favor of passing it to Christine's budget. I, I really, it's really in my budget, and I, and I asked for the increase, so. Is it, is it one or two people that I'm one. very, okay. It's, it's the same, one. your interventionist is her standard-based teacher. Well, I, I, I'm my, just trying my, to, I'm, <laughs> that's the shell game. I'm really, I'm, no, I'm, it, I'm, I'm confused. Right, there's only one person, and it was decided that because that person did standards-based work, mm -hmm. then that person should belong to Christine. Okay. I'm not necessarily in agreement to that okay. because it, I budgeted it, Christine didn't budget it. Wow. Okay. Okay. And, and so, Brandy, yours is in your budget or Christine's? Randy's. Yeah. Yeah. Randy's. 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 Yeah. Randy's.
So what's I just I, I mean again what's is this why do we do this? Like I don't yeah. I don't have an answer. Okay. To be honest with and you. I don't, I'm not trying to be yeah. we're not trying to be. No. Um, I'm just trying to understand. Stacy, yeah. Stacy, do you know Stacy? Why don't we look at that and make that okay. change? Okay. Okay. I'm not sure how that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know. You know? And from the back oh. of the room. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> and, and you did this right? Yeah. Ouch. Yes, I did do that. There you go. <laughs> wow. This was originally done when the positions were added, probably 2005, 2006, because the standards-based teachers that had been placed in each of the building at the time, and actually the board's desire at that time was to have a standards-based interventionist in each building, and it was in the Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment budget because that individual oversaw um, all the interventions plus the RTI plan that took place for those individuals. Um, and I spoke actually recently on Saturday about my budget because the high school had one of those positions that was changed into an English teacher as budgets got leaner and leaner and leaner. It was removed out of Christine's budget and actually put into the high school budget, which actually caused a slight increase. And I think we had a chance also on um, Saturday to look at the high school numbers where English department had shown an increase, but yet we hadn't added anybody yet at that time. It's because of those positions migrating based upon function. So if they were doing standards-based work and doing those interventions, they were in that director CIA, director uh, budget 20. And if they were in doing local budget work, then they were put back into the budget <laughs> where they should be. Uh, but those have been like that for probably the last nine years. Um, and that happened back when I was at central office. Okay. I'd love to hear what you have to say. What do you say? What do you say? <laughs> um, so I work, when I worked with Stacy. I actually, things get moved and put into mind. Like, for example, I have all the gifted and talented teachers. And I have a literacy teacher and uh, the Title II, Title One A kindergarten teacher, even though it's paid by title funds, it still shows up in mine. So it's this whole system of staff being assigned. And I think what we were trying to do is when we have a new position, for example, the videographer that we have was put under mine as it started. So it's been this shift. And so I just, I become kind of the catch-all, I guess. And Stacy works all that piece together. But so you are the potpourri. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, maybe sure. it's something you can, can just, you can look at is how to be consistent. Yeah. It's just yeah. in right. terms of consistency right. of where it makes sense and that right. it's the same building to building. Just so we're not so confused. Sounds good. Yeah. We confuse. And report easy. back, please. <laughs> I just want to know if next year you'll be tuning into the TV laughing as we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me? They won't even be tuning in. Yeah. <laughs> they won't be laughing. <laughs> Okay. Does it, anybody else have any questions? I don't have questions, but I've been playing with numbers if you want some numbers. Go for it. Okay. Um, so what I heard was we were looking at putting the 51000 back in the budget, some of the charter school money back in the budget, and wanting to get to about a 2.99% increase. 999. Well, that changes things <laughs> if you want the extra net. But if we do that, um, and we put half the charter school money in, mm -hmm. uh, we would need to cut another 63000 from the budget okay. to get to 2.99. Um, we wouldn't have to cut anything else if you only wanted to add 65000 of the charter money in. So it's sort of how much of a cushion do we want to build there? And then balancing that with how much you want to cut. And so <laughs> you guys feel that, that magic number, like buying a car, if it's... If it's Forty-nine, ninety-nine, ninety-nine. You know, it's about three thousand or thirty thousand. It's like buying anything. That has that's a marketing thing. That yeah. has nothing to do with buying a car. <laughs> it's. So I was it's just a, saying, but that, well, that uh, people feel I see, comfortable. When I see twenty-nine, I, I know it's. Well, you, when you buy your gas, you ever notice it's how much, how much you pay for the gas? You know, it says two nine nine nine. Do you go home and say two thirty? You say no, I spent twenty-nine <laughs> or two nine. I'm kind of I know it's weird. Thinking along the same ways of you, though, Eric. I don't know that we need that. Number. I think if it's, if it's close, you know, it comes out to 3.05. So or yeah. No. So, so Jennifer, if we did the uh, half the charter and, and put the 51,000, it didn't cut anything. What what would that get the percentage to? Uh, half the charter and didn't cut anything. Yeah, and and the 51,000 back in, it yep. didn't cut anything. That's the second. I'll just add back 65. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, didn't take it. Three, uh, three, one, four. The pie budget. <laughs> what slice do you get? <laughs> But I mean, I don't have as much experience as you guys, so I, 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 but if, that, if that's really a trigger. I will tell you, I will tell you that um, this year, unlike, unlike other years, um, I can almost be guaranteed that, and I can't speak for Raymond, that Wyndham's taxes from the municipal side will be higher than they've been in the past. Okay. That will have an impact on the Wyndham taxpayers because Wyndham, on the municipal side, has been extremely frugal, to put it mildly, and have not paid for a lot of infrastructure. As we all ride on these roads, and people, you know, complain about the different same things. With us same with the school board. So, uh, so the thing being is that we also have to be, you know, consider consider that fact that because this is something that we have to make sure people are, are going to, to vote for um, and they vote all together right it's one vote for the whole thing at the end school. it is not what happens is the school the school budget goes to referendum mm -hmm. the town budget goes to a public hearing it never goes to the ballot okay like we know that you go in and vote I know because I go to that every year um, and but the school vote is a both towns. It's a it's a doesn't oh, right. it's not a Wyndham Raymond. It's yep. it passes. Oh, I thought you when or, she was saying right. both, I thought yeah. she was talking about the okay. municipal you meant, side. No, I meant what you answered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. She did. Yeah. Mar so Mar why don't you? I mean, we're pretty close. Why don't we go back and try to get to just under three percent? Okay. I think it would help. I. I and we just need I some really, time to do that, and we'll, we'll I really do. know roughly where you want to get to, and then we'll just. And I think I think half the charter school is, is a, a good amount. I don't think this. I think 16. I think it's a good comfort. I, I would feel I would feel comfortable, um, because there are other things that happen that we have to dip into, into mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. into any money that we have in there, and I and I would not mm -hmm. like to feel that we had to. Yeah. And we don't have a huge contingency. Two hundred thousand dollars is not a huge right. contingency. So point one four is sixty five thousand dollars, is that what you're telling me? Uh sixty three, yeah. But so to answer your question, I guess it's yeah. There's your number, but I hate to say it, but that's my own personal opinion. Well, I I'm not cast in stone about but it'd be nice to see what it looks like. I mean, we don't want blood. I mean, you know what I mean? We don't, I, I know it sounds that way, but yeah. Volleyball coaches. You know, but. I don't want the volleyball coach cut either, but that's just my personal. <laughs> <laughs> but Sorry. Um, I guess, I guess it's see what you can do. Yeah. Okay. Without, like I said. We will do that. Without drawing blood. I'm very, this is, I'm not on this piece now. I'm on, um, bus loop and whether we're doing a warrant article for that. So I think Bill's trying to check into that with someone who was on the bus loop. On the bus loop. And Did he hear? I don't know. Did he hear you? Because <coughs> that's something we have to decide if we want to put it on. Right. Um, in the my budget presentation, I made a recommendation that, that the Finance Committee hasn't had a chance to, to mull over, but um, if we had money available, a year, a year in fund balance available, and again, you know, Don's not here for me to, to ask that question, so it makes it a little more challenging. But I think Stacy's been doing a great job staying on top of that. And again, it's really a finance committee uh, recommendation to do that. But um, I, one of the mechanisms we're looking at would be adding some funding to the project from year in fund balance to give us enough money to complete element number one, which was the front section, and that would occur um, next summer. Now we're also uh, looking at options we have to get a bond to pay for the project. One of the challenges we have for, for lease payments is that um, with all the changes that have occurred with banks, and you're very familiar with reading the news, what's happened out there, um, our ability to provide um, lease purchases on things that can't physically be removed from the buildings is pretty much dried up. So the lockers can be a lease purchase because they can physically take them away. 
Um, that's why we can do that. Um, the masonry and the gym floor is a is a cash purchase because they can't take that away. So, those are the challenges we have as as we look at that. And you know, over the years in the past, you know, we we had a lease purchase for the changes to the front of the buildings for the security project. Today, we couldn't do that. That would have to have been a, a cash purchase, which that was a quarter million dollar effort. So, you know, that some of the the, the um, some of the challenges we have have changed a little bit as to how we need to meet the requirements. And Stacy and I have actually have a a, a, um, a conference call with Drummond Woodson to talk about that. I believe that's on Thursday, which is tomorrow, right? Yeah. Wow. So uh, you know, we can report back further on that. You know, I think that the the thing to do would be to um, again meet with the finance committee, see where things are towards the end of the year, and make a recommendation. And, and I do think that's one way we continue to improve our capital funding for these larger projects would be to start putting money away in a capital reserve so that we're not paying the interest charges and we can actually make that dollar go further. So that's kind of the plan. So if you did the lockers on these purchase five years, and so really it's only one fifth of that sixteen thousand that we would be putting into this budget? No, you, the sixteen is the least purchase payment. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. Good. Good. Thank you. Are we set for the moment? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So is the expectation, I'm just talking process now, that we're going to deliberate and vote next week? Is that the expectation? <coughs> how do people feel about that? I don't know. I'm no, no, I, I know. Yes. So how do people feel? I mean, do they feel that we are that close, that we could have one more deliberation and have the vote next week? They'd want to see the changes before the meeting then? Yeah, me too. Including a sheet like this that shows you know, all the laid out changes. Yeah. Right. As soon as possible, actually. So at least we can over. Yeah, have time to. Mm -hmm. So the ideal would be to have a vote next week, but if we can't come to a meeting of the minds, then we would have to, yeah, then we would have to, we would have to put that meeting on the 15th back in. Well, we'll get on this tomorrow, and yeah, the sooner we get, I think the sooner, right. the sooner we're able to get this, and people are are able to, you know, look at it and whatever, um, and then hopefully, um, because we have a leadership meeting tomorrow tomorrow morning, and you know, we'll put that on the on the agenda. But if we can get that out fairly reasonable in a reasonable time, and have Cindy hold off. On sending the uh, agenda, up. but we could always make an adjustment to the agenda afterwards. Yep. I'll okay. say that. Good, thank you. Done. Thank you all for coming. Um, thank you for your patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and we hope nobody, none of, I, and we hope nobody out there takes anything personal. There is nothing personal. And Stacy, thank you. Do we need Stacy to stay? No, we don't. You can go home. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm I don't want to make her. I don't want to have her sit here. She, yes. Go home and find some money. Now, I ha I do have a question though. If somebody, you know, by the time they go home and look through all this stuff or whatever, if if somebody has another question, do you want to send it to you, Sandy, and then you can just forward it to? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Thank, Thank you. you. That was fun. But if you do, <laughs> if anyone sends a question, would you CC the whole board so we know you've asked the question? Would that right. make sense? Yes. Yeah. And please, please, please put the pay the the page number on the on the question okay. on the yeah, question. If you have a question, so yeah. Yep. Everybody knows where where we're all looking here. Okay. Good. Oh. Okay. It will help. Okay. Um, I thought I have a big mess here. And we're only slightly behind time. Um, 
Okay, next on the agenda is um, minutes. the minutes. I got one question. On if, the you were, if you weren't here on the minutes, do you uh, abstain from voting? To be perfectly honest with you, I looked that up in Robert's Rules because I was always told, I was under the impression that if you were not here, you had to abstain. Yeah. And um, in Robert's Rules, it basically said if you, if you are not here, you read the minutes. If you agree with them, you can vote for them because when you abstain, it's as good as a no vote. <laughs> okay, fine. It sounds, you know, so it's kind of like people shouldn't feel awkward I'll doing just put my e head up either. Last. If you all agree, either one. <laughs> either one. Okay. okay. Move to approve the minutes of the March 5th, 2015 meeting. Second. Okay. Are there any questions on those meeting minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor? It is done. It is approved. I move to approve the minutes of the March 11th, 2015 meeting. Questions, comments? Okay, all those in favor? It is unanimous. I move to approve the minutes of the March 18th, 2015 meeting. And second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? It is approved. <clears throat> I move to approve the minutes of the March 25th, 2015 meeting. I second. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Any questions? None? Okay, all those in favor? It is unanimous. Okay, uh, committee reports, if there are any uh, finance, Jerry? We haven't met. We will be meeting next week, so those of you who are on the uh, board, on, the, on that committee will meet. It's an RES. Um, Sandy's gonna set up a room and a light supper. And we'll look at tax implications. Hopefully, Sandy, we can have the community assessments like Don would usually have for us to take a look at. Um, we'll talk about the bus loop, and I'm hoping Bill can come to talk about that with us. And then there was um, a couple of other things that we thought we might talk about, but the timing, we have to be succinct in our timing. So that'll be at 5.15 at RES, and Sandy will let us know what room, probably the one we usually are in right up the stairs. Um, in, um, are we in RES? Or oh, Jordan Small. We're, oh, no, we're in the gym. Okay, so yes. So it might be that we can use the conference room that's off the main. Let's plan the conference room off the, in the main um, office. We had that uh, readmission hearing that time. So okay, great. So we'll be okay. doing that next week. Um, facilities, Pete. <coughs> yeah, we have not met, but we are scheduled to meet on the sixth on Monday. Okay, great. Um, policy, Kate. We're meeting on Tuesday, and we're going to be discussing um, grades and report cards and progress reports, um, which then, hopefully, once that's resolved, and we'll, um, are the principals going to be there? You know, they were supposed to be. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Sure. It's not for now. But that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, and that will dovetail with the work that we have done on graduation policy can you can you refresh my memory on when the capstone was it was it this grade coming in what, what grade no because we didn't want to do it mid-year right. so it's freshman year of next year okay so is the it the kids coming in the eighth grade is this year right okay so um is that that must be on your agenda then, that policy with community service. That's yes. part of um, graduation. <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah, but yes. Yeah. Yes, we will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other uh, adult ed? I don't know if they've had a meeting. Nope. Nothing from adult ed. Um, Technology, okay. but I, I, I can. Uh, there's a lot of little things that they they deal with from uh, you know what sites are going to use for to store things on and the redundant servers. And I can go down through a few if you want to. No, or I could just forward them out, which I should have done. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, that'd that be would be great. great. <laughs> Thank you. I could tell you were very eager to read them. 
<laughs> but we would love to see them. Thank you. Um, it's better read than hearing me say it. Yeah. Um, um, the vocational schools, um, I'm still, I am not delinquent in sending you the, the minutes. I send you the minutes when I receive them. <clears throat> Westbrook has, I, I've, I've got them in line. They come out pretty quick. Paths, it's just a continual battle, you know. Uh, in fact, I, I sent them out today. Um, and so, uh, I, again, a lot of the stuff they're looking at is stuff that's kind of ongoing. They're still trying to look at how to, how do they uh, give students credit for the work that's done there? Um, that's a <clears throat> that's quite a that's quite a lengthy process, and there was quite a long conversation on that the last time. And they're getting the good thing is now they're asking for a lot of input from the sending schools. <clears throat> excuse me, like on the math, and, and um, could they have input from the math teachers from the high schools? Because what they have a technical most of their teachers are technical teachers and they would need to see how does it how does it link the requirement that's needed at the high school versus what they're doing there because um, those are professional folks they have there and um, they're not totally understanding the requirements from the Department of Education mm -hmm. uh, so that's an ongoing thing and as as we know Westbrook the um, the days that um, have to be lined up. We're all set with Westbrook and um, Paths is having a terrible time because every time they think they have their schools lined up, somebody's somebody's out of out of whack a little bit. But it's not an impact on us, so we don't dwell on I don't dwell on that one uh, very much. And they've got a lot of endeavors going on as far as uh, in fact tomorrow, um, Winter Middle School eighth graders are going to both schools. I know that because my grandson's going. Um, you know, and so they're looking at how do they get more parents involved and, you know, do we change, should we even change that a bit because they're having eighth graders get all psyched about the vocational school and they can't go until, until they're a junior. Mm -hmm. So by then they're kind of pretty much embedded in whatever they're doing, you know. So there's a lot of endeavors going on at the schools. Um, and you know what are good programs? What are programs that are are, are uh, not holding the interest? Even though there are good jobs out there, uh, like one of the things, like the heating and air conditioning, they're having a tough time filling those. And um, and I brought it up; it had been brought up before about possibly changing the name, so it's something, so it's a name the kids can recognize and sounds a little bit more appealing. Like everything you hear is HVAC or whatever, and they're calling it plumbing and heating. You know, so something for them to look at. Maybe they look at how th how they sell these types of Can positions. Can you refresh my memory? Why is it um, class? Why it's junior year? Is it because of the classes that students are required well, the only to take freshman and sophomore? Well, that's part of it. But then you've got the, they call uh, Tech 1 and, and Tech 2. Some kids can go in the ninth grade, depending on, and I can't remember which courses, which classes it is, they, that it is. Um, because they're basically two year, and I think it's because they're, kind of, they're two year classes for the most part. Yeah, I know, that's I think too, and get your other ones done later. Um, but I can find out that, that Chris would have a better hold on, on that one. Um, so that's it, is there another grouping? Yes, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about strategic planning, just kind of looking ahead. Uh, we had our first session with our consultant Mary J. McCallum and people who perhaps were in the last strategic plan she facilitated and did a very good job. So what we've we kind of outlined uh, the work that we need to do and I just want to kind of just bring you up to date conceptually of where we're going. Um, so we're, we're trying to design a planning team and the planning team would actually begin to brainstorm and prioritize strategies to get feedback from the community. So feedback from the commu community would be one component of this planning committee. And, and then once we know um, the type of strategies to get the feedback, we we're actually going to plan that event. So as I mentioned last time, technology, we're going to really look at technology and surveys and feedback, ways to, to get um, a cross-section of feedback throughout both communities. And then this committee will actually collect the information and organize it so that it makes sense and hopefully we'll have that done by 
the fall. And then from there, um, we're calling this a, uh, a vision check-in conference that will probably happen after the first of the year, next year, January, February, where some night we'll bring community members into a session and actually show them the data that we collected and to get their feedback on that. And from there, we'll um, begin to write the plan and it should be done, hopefully, I would think sometime in the spring next year. So we've mapped this out and this planning committee really has a lot of work to do. And uh, there we, we have, I think, around 15 people that we hope to get involved on that planning committee. Um, and we'll have our first session, I believe it's in two weeks. Um, so that's, we're just really excited. This is the fun work. This is where you can think big and dream and, and uh, it's exciting to, to keep the vision alive and to, to make sure that the public um, is a part of that. And that's really what this work is. Now, do you know what the composition of the committee is gonna be? It's a cross section, um, community members, business people, um, certainly teachers, administrators. Uh, we, we had a whole list of people that we have to contact. And um, I would think most of the people that we are going to be in touch with will be very much behind this work. It is a commitment. We're going to meet every other week until midsummer. So we're very upfront about that, that it's two hours every other week. Um, but so far, I think we'll, we'll, uh, definitely have a, a good team and and if, if people can't do it then we'll pick up other names to to call as well that and thank you Ed Gagney for um, allowing me to be involved in dancing with the staff <laughs> I'm still paying for it um, <laughs> it was fun it was a great time and I really enjoyed it it's just such a time commitment um, but it was a, it was a good time so other than that that's all I have at this point in time all righty. Okay, board roundtable. You got anything, Pete? Right. Jen? No. Huh? Yeah. Eric, you must have something, Eric. You don't? No. Jerry? Very good. Yeah, yeah can we start, <laughs> can we start on the budget from the first page again? Just go through. <laughs> We're going to let you keep this room after we leave and. You can go through it all. Um, I don't have anything. Um, so, I guess now we will go into executive session on for the central office administrator contract. If someone would care to read the motion. I move to go to executive session to discuss central office administrator contracts for fiscal year 16 pursuant to one MRSA subsection 405 Six A and not return to the regular meeting. Second. Third. I have a question. Um, do we vote on this tonight? The mm -hmm. contracts? No. I didn't think so. I know. I'm trying to figure why. Yeah. Why? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm sorry. Did we have a second? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Oh, jeez. It is unanimous, and we will not be returning after our executive session. Thank you, and good night. Au revoir. Au revoir.